My name is Arlene. I'm 66 years old. I am a retired case manager for the state of Hawaii. I define myself as being nitpicky, perfectionist. And if someone were to see what was in my house, they would seriously doubt it. I'm a product of World War II. I was born in the middle of the blackouts, and at that time, everybody was asked to conserve everything. The rest of my family, not too many of them were affected by it. I think I was probably the only one that um, kind of like got affected by conserving and you know saving things for later and all that. It's just something that kind of like a snowball. It just kept rolling and rolling and picking things up as it went. It is not my nature to let things like this happen. It's just over a period of times, it got worse and worse and worse, and it got to the point where I just kind of give up. My name is Richard, and I'm Arlene's husband. I recently had prostate surgery. The next problem I have is scoliosis. It's gotten pretty severe. I can't really stand up straight. We only have enough space in the house right now for Arlene to sleep. I can't even sleep here anymore. He just kind of like got squeezed out and uh, it's almost at the point where I think I'm gonna wind up sleeping in my car. My name is Melissa, and I am Arlene's daughter. When I first found out that my dad was sleeping in the car, I was angry. Every time I think of him climbing in the car, going to sleep, it upsets me, it frustrates me. It's just not right. My name is Billy, and I'm Arlene's son-in-law. Melissa told me uh, that growing up, her mom had a lot of stuff. It kind of conflicted with life, never had friends over. So I kind of drew a picture from that. It didn't really start getting too bad until she was in the intermediate school. She never could bring her friends home because things were starting to pile up. Sometimes Melissa was uh, a little upset about uh, the, the way things were piling up. Growing up in that house was very difficult for me. I had a very small, very small little place on the floor to play, and that space eventually was taken over by things. Every Christmas, we tried to get a Christmas tree, a very small one that would go on the top of a card table. And as I got older and things accumulated, it was harder and harder to get one. That was always painful. You know, it was always tears and fighting and just to get a Christmas tree. I actually had a conversation with my mom. I pointed out the fact that he's had these medical procedures done recently and he's your husband. How, how can you do this to him? How are you okay with this? I, I do really feel for what he has to go through. I feel frustrated because, you know, all this time we haven't been able to do too much about it. Many people have offered to help, my dad and I included. We've tried to clean the house up in the past. Okay, let's just get a big dumpster and just get everything and dump it. I can't do that. I just cannot do that. Okay, we're here to clean this house. I'm Matt Paxton, I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. You know, we were called to make it safe for your husband, but quite honestly, I think it needs to be safer for both of you. Normally, we have a lot of rules and we tell people how it's gonna go. I've got a hunch that's not gonna work in this situation. What do you wanna say to her directly to her? What? Uh, don't be afraid to throw stuff out. All right, family over here, what do we wanna think? I wanna see my dad sleeping in the house again. I wanna see my parents married 40 years to sleep in the same bed. What is the right way to clean your home? Um, I guess the suggestion is just bring the thing out and I'll try to make a decision okay. right then. We have got to get working, guys. So I think on three, we're going to do a little uh, a pep thing. Instead of a three cheers, we can just say banzai three you, times. What do you nice do with your hands? You can do that. Okay, ready? 
Let's go. Banzai. Oh, Alright. Banzai. And Banzai. Alright, let's do it. The reality is, you can see, like literally see how bad this is. Yeah. Okay? Stuff's gonna fall non-stop on us. This house is extremely dangerous and that's why we're here. This was the living room. Um, the that was the kitchen. <laughs> this is like way, way, way worse than I could have imagined it would ever get. But why did you keep acquiring stuff when there was no room to begin with? Yeah, the only thing that has been acquired in there are the boxes to replace other boxes. I'm just, I'm horrified. <laughs> okay, that's the key. Let's keep moving. I've got a box of empty tea boxes. I, I'm always looking for things to wrap gifts in and I, I can never find, that's why I get little boxes and more boxes. I, I think that there's like millions of little boxes in there that you could use, and get, you know, let go of some of them. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I specialize in hoarding and OCD. Arlene, as we go going through this process, balance your thoughts with safety. All these items put together equal a hoarded house. The way she thinks, the way she makes decisions, everything is consistent with compulsive hoarding. This is going awfully slow, and, you know. Oh, crap. We got a lot of stuff. You know. This is going really slow, because I'm trying to be respectful what you want to keep. Do you think you're going to reach your goal of creating space in your home? Not if I have to keep on making decisions. Well, who's going to make the decisions? I feel like the decisions are being made for me. Then. So maybe we shouldn't ask you anything and just let things come before you. Do you want to do this by yourself? I don't know. No, you're not. You're not going to. You can't just do it. Just let them help you, please. I don't have any choice, you know? If you didn't have any choice, though, these trucks would be filled and they'd be gone by now and the house would be empty. You know, we wait, we'd move just enough stuff to, to open the front door. That's not even close to, you know, what we were hoping to accomplish today. I'm letting go a lot more than I would have. You think you so? Know? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, we, we, we well, haven't let go of anything, though. There's right. nothing in the trash truck at all. If I could just say so, where I wanted to go for right now, it would go a lot okay. faster. Okay. Well, I think Alrighty. then we need to back off. Can you find just one thing that you could take a risk with? You want me to go look for something now? All right, I'll look for something now. Go. So. What is this? So the children's craft supplies. Okay, so guys, craft supply box. No, I want them to be kept together and that's why I'm trying to find something to put it in. It's a group together. If you will let me help you, this will get done. All right, so I won't be able to find what I need. And just put it in any old way. So all of this is more important than your husband having I a place to sleep? I don't know. I told you what you need to do to get better. Go find something that's of some value and say, let this go. That could be what marks the rest of this process for you. I did say in the very beginning that um, what I decided to keep or to throw or what has to be my decision. Uh, tonight, I will still be sleeping in the car, obviously. There's still not uh, room to put a bed. She'll never have this opportunity again to create a safe place for them to live in. What are, what are you feeling right now? What are you thinking? I don't think she realizes that she's still not fixing it. She's the one slowing us down. And yeah. I, I don't want to take it out of her hands, but I feel like we have to at this point. Do you realize that this is, this is like a disorder that can kill people in some circumstances? <sighs> the hardest part of my job is to sometimes go against what I would normally do, but for a greater good. We're leaving today. We have to take urgent measures. Do you think she would trust us to do a bulk of this? My thought, truthfully, is that she's not going to go for that. OK, if, if it was depression and she was suicidal, would put her in a hospital. 
She has a hoarding disorder that's so severe that she could die from it. And you could too. So this is, this is a, a critical moment in terms of, of family intervention. We can replace things, we cannot replace them. Yes, that's so important. I, I hate to be pessimistic, but it's just, she's gonna go. Hey, Mom. I just love being talked over. What really? do you think we were talking about? I don't know. Um, if things continue the way that they're going, I'm really concerned for what happens when we leave. I really want to go in there, and, and I really just want to, to blast the place and, and get rid of a lot and not bring it past this table. If I get rid of $100,000 worth of stuff that you could use, I will spend the rest of my life rebuying it for you, but I can't replace you and I'm terrified I'm gonna lose you. So are you willing to let me just get rid of a lot of stuff in your house? Go ahead, it's just, you know. Okay, okay. It's, okay. it's, We'll check in with you from time hands. to time, okay? Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I just got done kind of talking to Arlene about some things and uh, uh, she's kind of giving us carte blanche to just clean. Things that you'd put in a house, we want to keep everything else, guys. Until she says stop, just go. I knew what was coming. That was a big decision, Arlene. Yes. Very, very brave. Arlene decided that it was time to let go and trust. She knew deep inside herself she could not make those decisions quick enough to save her family. You're standing on the floor. You realize no one has stood on that floor in 40 years. 40 years. What do you think? Oh, I love it. I think it's it's the last time you thought you'd have a bed. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. So it's new. We got you some new sheets, new pillows. Ooh. So <laughs> you're sleeping in a bed tonight. All right. Wow. This is amazing. Never thought I would see the walls of that room. It's always, always been cluttered. Oh, boy. Look at that. Wow. You feel good about it? I guess so, yeah. We got floor. That, that's important. We got floor. <laughs> and we got room to move around. The queen, we've never had a queen either. Look at that. Which side do you want? <laughs> we haven't made as much progress as I would have liked to make. We haven't even touched any other rooms besides this first one, but at least my dad is out of the car now. Do you have your view back, Mom? Yeah, you have your view, Mom. Yes. Why you Try bought the house. Try to keep it that way. It's beautiful. I mean, I trusted Billy's judgment, but um, there were a bunch of things that kind of, it kind of scares me to think what happened. It's beyond comparison. We got this room cleared, part of the kitchen, and we have a bed to sleep in now. It's terrific.